So we just saw um, a situation, really two separate situations, where the order of integration can change whether you have to set up one integral or two. Sometimes it's not a question about the order of uh, the integrals in terms of what's more convenient to set up, but sometimes it's more about evaluating the integrals themselves, actually doing the integrals. So let's look at the following example. How about uh, integrating 0 to 4, uh, that's for x, and then y ranges from negative uh, root 16 minus x squared all the way up to positive root 16 minus x squared, and we'll integrate the function x cubed. So if we do this at face value, we should integrate with respect to y. So instead of x cubed, now we have x cubed times y, which we need to evaluate at the two y endpoints listed. And if we plug in, uh, we'll have a thing that looks like this. Yeah, plugging in y is the positive root first and then the negative root next. And look, we've got a negative negative, so that's going to be a positive. Collect like terms here. Um, now what do we do with this integral? Well, uh, we could do a substitution of 16 minus x squared. Um, since this is a substitution with a with a definite integral, uh, we've got to update the bounds. So by the way, when x is 0, u is 16. When x is 4, then u is 0. So after substitution, the integral would look something like this. Yeah, so um, dx... Uh, Oh, you know what? This is an, let's see, this integral ends in dx, so I should have still left uh, x values here. Apologies about that. But the whole point here is that we can make some updates with the twos. Um, yeah, this is the integral that should have been updated with the endpoints. So um, you have to substitute in reverse. Um, you've got to solve for x squared here. There's a lot of steps, right? x squared, by the way, is 16 minus u, and at least this integral is all in terms of u. You got to distribute u to the one half to both the 16 and minus u, and there's a lot of steps. Okay, this can work. Don't get me wrong, but it is a lot of steps. So here's a second answer. So instead of doing this integral directly as written, let's notice that the y values go from, you, you know, it, y equals plus minus root 16 minus x squared. That forms a circle of radius 4, right? And you'll notice x goes from 0 to 4. So think about it. This circle of radius 4, or a filled-in circle of radius 4, excuse me, we only have the right half because x goes from 0 to 4. Yeah? Yeah. This is really, the region we're integrating over is the right half of a filled-in circle of radius 4. So you can, we'll just click on this link to, just to see a picture. Okay, so here's what it looks like, yeah? So y is stuck between uh, negative this radical and positive this radical, x from 0 to 4. Okay, it's the right half of a circle of radius 4 that's been filled in. But if that's what we have, we could also describe it a different way, right? We could describe this, sorry, this should probably be a less than or equal to, but we, sh we can describe this as x values that are stuck between 0 at the smallest and then um, a formula that's based off of the circle at the largest, except now the range of y values um, is not 0 to 4, it's got to be negative 4 to 4. So you'll notice that both the red shaded region and the blue shaded region occupy the same space here. Okay, so basically instead of the given integral, we're going to swap the order of integration, keeping in mind that the outside integral still has to end in constant, so we're going to have to update what this, what, what we have here for the inside one, so x has to range from 0 to root 16 minus y squared. Then the point is, when we integrate with respect to x first, we have x cubed over 4, which we evaluate at both um, x equals root 16 minus y squared and at 0. At 0, the value is going to be 0. So um, in the end, we've got um, the square root undoes part of the exponent, so we just live with a square. This is correct as written. There's still something to foil out here. There's a bit of work to do, but this integral is already way better than the one we were just looking at. Yeah, this is much easier, really, I think, than the integral we were working on. You know, both can be done, but switching the order and updating the endpoints seem to be easier. Keep in mind, though, you know, the work, there was still some work in re-describing the region. So in integral uh, where x goes from 0 to 4 and y goes from negative root 16 minus x squared to positive root 16 minus x squared um, becomes an integral where y goes from negative 4 to 4 and x goes from 0 to root 16 minus y squared. So it takes a little bit of work, but most of the work here 
um, to be really honest, isn't calculus. It's really more um, the geometry of, of what happens with equations in x and y. So I'd like you to uh, consider practicing this. So instead of evaluating directly the integral from negative 1 to 0 for y and the integral uh, from negative 1 minus y squared to positive root 1 minus y squared for x of the function 2y, instead of doing this directly, what would the endpoints of the integrals be if you're going to switch the order of integration? Or just to clarify, without using a graphing calculator, I would like you to draw the regions. Do a quick sketch of the region we're integrating over here, and then fill in the question marks. Right? So instead of a dx dy, if you're going to have a dy dx integral instead, what would the question marks here have to be? And then finally, I'll just make uh, one more comment that um, if you, uh, is this the same example? It is. Let's just end it with this. All right. Great.